in your work, which has now moved into money, I know you've been working on a book. Can you talk about this intersection of money and dying? Do you ever have money conversations with patients who are dying? Does money even come up when people realize they only have you know, two, six weeks uh, to live? Or is it something that people don't even talk about at that stage often? What I started realizing as someone who became interested in money because that gave me the way into financial independence, I was having all these end of life discussions with hospice patients and they almost never talked about money unless they had to. When they talked about the regrets of life, it was never, I wish I worked harder. It was never, I wish I made more money. It was more, I wish I repaired these relationships or I wish I did these things that I always wanted to do that I was too scared to try. The only time money came into it is if there wasn't enough money for their basic care. Mm. And then that became a real issue. So to me, that was the interesting part. It's like, we need enough money to support ourselves and our family and have the time and space to figure out our own identity and purpose. So it's a tool, but ultimately what I learned from the dying is it's not really the goal. So how has your own relationship with money changed? Money took up a lot of my thought process, especially at the beginning of this. I now spend a lot less time thinking about money. And part of the reason is I think you put your processes in place to manage the money so that you don't need to think about them. And so again, I think money much more of as fuel or potential energy, like what will it give me the ability to do? And now I want to spend my time concentrating on those things I want to do. Our relationship with money in this culture is often so toxic and people mm -hmm. make extreme trade-offs you know, for their money. Just like myself, when I was pursuing financial independence, I really didn't take very good care of myself. And that's something now I've had to play catch up with in the subsequent years. Why do people make so many unreasonable trade-offs in the pursuit of money, especially when it comes to their physical health? I think it still gets back to the fact that we start looking at money as a goal instead of a tool. And I think we do it because it's low hanging fruit. It's really hard to say, my goal in life is to be an excellent pool player. And that's all I wanna do with myself and that's what I'm gonna do. Or be an excellent writer or be an excellent friend or whatever it is that you find as your purpose. It's daunting to do that, but it's really easy to say, my goal in life is to make a lot of money. And there are steps I can do to, I can either work a lot, I can do some side hustles, I can play the lottery and hope I win. Like there's steps you can take. And I think because it's low hanging fruit, it lets us off the hook from doing some of the harder, deeper work.